1994, an internet forum by the name of the Cannibal Cafe was created. As the name suggests, it was a dark corner of the internet where people could discuss their cannibalism fantasies and even arrange to put them into practice. While the site was shut down in 2002, you can still find archives of many of the posts and the pages on there. Let's investigate. If you enjoy mysteries, true crime, disappearances and conspiracies, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. I also have a Patreon and a PayPal, so if you're interested in supporting the channel, feel free to check those out, a link will be in the description. I probably don't need to do a warning here as the title of the video and the intro already suggests that we'll be getting into some pretty dark stuff, but obviously viewer discretion is advised. I won't be showing any graphic images, but you will probably find some if you decide to look at the archives yourself, so proceed with caution. In 1994, a man named Pero Loco started the Cannibal Cafe on Necrobabes.org, a website dedicated to various fetishes relating to death. The Cannibal Cafe itself was basically a bunch of people who fantasised about eating someone or being eaten by someone. Pero Loco is a pseudonym, but his real name has been identified and he has done an interview with a journalist in the past as well as briefly appearing in an episode of Encounters with Evil in 2016 where he highlighted that cannibalism fantasies aren't as uncommon as you'd think. Pero has been referred to as a cult leader and supposedly founded the Holy Church of Dolset Dolset being defined as a paraphilia involving the cooking and eating of women. There's barely any mention of the Church of Dolset online, and while he clearly had a number of followers, some of whom did speak of him as if he was of elevated status, it sounds like the cult claims are slightly exaggerated, and that the so-called church was just a bunch of people who all shared cannibalism as a common interest. Pero has links to two different homicide cases, but we'll get back to that later. He has said himself, and I found one database website which appears to corroborate that he has a medical background, though I'm not sure what in specifically. There are three separate FAQ pages where he wrote very detailed answers relating to how to impale a woman without killing her, and I mean very detailed, like he'd spent a significant amount of time planning every tiny aspect of it, maybe even like he'd done it before. From these and other posts, he does appear to have some level of medical knowledge, I just hope to god he wasn't around any patients. While he clearly had some questionable interests, he portrayed himself as an advocate for consent, and made it clear on the forum that it was only for consenting adults, condemning any posts involving children. Contrary to popular belief, the Cannibal Cafe was not a dark web forum and could be accessed by anyone on the clear net. Let's take a look at some of the archives of the forum. As you can see, the layout is an absolute train wreck. It's painful to navigate and not all of the posts themselves have been archived, though there is enough to build a picture of what the forum was like. There are a range of posts, from people looking for a willing victim to people offering themselves up. People shared recipes and cooking tips on how to cook human meat perfectly. I picked a selection of posts which encapsulate the nature of the forum. One read, Hello, I am a Canadian male looking for a female under 30, if possible, to be able to meet and eat. I feel that the female should be given the choice as to how the process is going to go, so if you are an interested applicant, please describe in detail as to how you would like me to prepare you. The selected person will be able to fly here and have their fantasy fulfilled. If you reply, you can push your answer to the forum or feel free to email me directly. I look forward to eating you soon. This one read, I am a very dangerous man to get to know. I can lift five 140 pound girls and carry them for miles, squeezing them hard enough to crush their puny little spine like a toothpick. I fear no one. I will and can eat any girl I wish to. You might never know. I might be stalking you at this very moment. It seems quite common to refer to human meat the same as animal meat, even using terminology like cattle and veal. This post read, I'm looking for packaged meat, breeders and cattle, how can I obtain these, especially female redheads? Another post was from a user named Alan who was offering himself up to be eaten. He said he would like to quietly disappear without a trace and begs whoever might accept his offer to keep him naked, chained and caged while he awaits slaughter. He stresses that this is for real and says he will hand over all of his money to make it worth the while. And finally, this one is basically an invitation to a barbecue party where you can eat OP's ex-girlfriend. 
They say they plan to slaughter their ex-girlfriend in six to seven months and ask for suggestions on the preparation of the meat. As disturbing as these posts are, it's probably safe to assume that the majority of users were just role-playing. Some did specify that. And to most people, it is a pretty sickening fantasy, but hey, consenting adults and all that. Thing is, they weren't all role-playing, and some were deadly serious, pun not intended. You may have heard of Armin Mywares, a man who was arrested in 2004 for killing and eating someone. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the murder itself, as there are so many videos and articles online if you're interested, but Armin actually frequented the cafe, and some of his posts can still be seen using the Wayback Machine. He went by the name of Frankie and made a number of posts and commented on other posts discussing cannibalism in general and attempting to find a man that would consent to being eaten. They had to be between 18 and 30 years old, normal build. Many users on the cafe seemed to like the idea of cannibalism and enjoyed the role playing but probably wouldn't actually go through with it in real life. Nevertheless, he eventually found someone, Bernd Brandes, who consented to being eaten. He didn't exactly fit Armin's specifications, but I guess cannibals requiring consenting victims can't be choosers. According to some sources, despite Armin's ads on the cafe, he and Bernd didn't actually meet on there, but another website which featured similar content. The story is bizarre and horrifying, but it leads into an interesting debate surrounding the morality of consensual murder. There are fair points on both sides of the argument, but I guess what it really boils down to is, is someone actually capable of consenting to their own murder? Fetishes surrounding murder and cannibalism are certainly abnormal, but I guess it's not exactly a choice. But to actually act out something like that, to consent to someone killing and eating you is just totally irrational. Can someone considering that ever really be in the right state of mind to consent to it? If you think no, I'm curious, as a hypothetical, if someone was evaluated by a psychiatrist and determined to not be mentally ill, would it then be morally acceptable? Let's also say that they have no family, no friends, no one who depends on them, and no one who would miss them if they were gone. Arguably, if they really wanted to die, and their death would affect no one else, and they were determined to be 100% sane, perhaps they should have the right to consent to their own murder, if that's really the way that they want to go. I'd be really interested to hear what you think in the comments though, as it's a very complex debate, and I'm not exactly sure where I stand on it. Unsurprisingly, Perro found no issue with it, telling the all.com, Everything he did, he did completely consensually. It's not like the guy was a serial killer. He didn't sit there and invite Jürgen over for dinner and sneak up behind him. They discussed it. Jürgen wanted to be killed and eaten. To me, that's assisted suicide at worst. Amin's arrest, which occurred over a year after he killed Burned, is what led to the end of the Cannibal Cafe. That same article goes on to mention how Perro was also implicated in another case of consensual homicide, where 35-year-old Sharon Lepatka searched on the internet for a man to torture, strangle and kill her. She found someone and it happened, and Perro knew them both, describing them as very nice people. After the cafe was shut down in 2002, Perro created a new website in 2003, Dolset Girls, dedicated to, quote, covering a full range of graphic sexual fantasy. He claimed the site got over a million hits every month, from men and women more or less equally, and that at least one user was a US congressman. I think and hope that fetishes like this are still pretty rare, but it seems to be a lot more common than you'd think. It appears that enacting this fantasy once wasn't enough for Armin, as he made numerous posts on the cafe in the months after the murder, requesting another volunteer. He also commented on other posts made by people who wanted to be eaten, such as one titled, Please Eat Me, by an 18-year-old man, to which he responded, Hi, I am Frankie from Germany, I will eat you. Please tell me your height and weight, also send me a pic from you. Where are you from? I hope you can come quick to me, I am a hungry cannibal. I don't know what's more unsettling, his adverts or some of his other interactions. In response to a post titled, Extreme Butcher Wanted, which isn't archived but we can take an educated guess on the nature of the post, he responded, Hi Hansel, being fried alive, that's certainly a nice idea, especially for you as a victim, but keep in mind that at your weight, there are about 35 kilograms of meat on you, so if every cannibal at the meal would eat about 500 grams of meat from you, that's a very large portion, you need about 70 people to eat you. After all, none of your delicious meat should remain and spoil. 
It will be quite difficult to drum up such a large number of eaters, so if you decide to slaughter and disassemble, quote, normally, please contact me. I will expertly slaughter and disassemble you, and also eat you completely with other cannibal friends. I look forward to your answer, your butcher. It makes me wonder if Burned was Armin's only victim, or if that was just the time that he got caught. He was pretty open and honest when he got arrested, and has even done interviews since. Knowing that he's likely going to be in prison for the rest of his life, he probably would have admitted it if he had more victims. But who knows, he certainly wanted to do it again, it just depends on whether or not anyone else seriously volunteered. Regardless of Armin, I'd be willing to bet that the Cannibal Cafe, or at least other similar websites, have facilitated the arrangement of other consensual cannibalism cases. Armin was debatably not very smart after the murder, he filmed the whole thing and posted it online. That's a pretty daft thing to do if you don't want to get caught, so I wonder how many other cannibals privately responded to serious ads from people who wanted to be eaten, went through with it, then never got caught and just never spoke about it again. The video itself is thought to be lost media, though you can find a couple of screenshots online that are allegedly supposed to be from the video, but it's not being confirmed. Look those up at your own risk though, because they are very graphic. As we already established, a good chunk of the cafe's users probably liked the idea of cannibalism more than they would actually like to go through with it, but I seriously doubt that Burned was the only person who was serious about being eaten. It is still hard to separate out posts from people who were very dedicated to the role-playing, but some of them seemed pretty serious. They spoke about each detail as if they had experience with it, if it was just role-playing, it was extremely well-researched and believable. So many of the posts specified that they were not role-playing, or emphasised that they wanted to do these things in real life, which makes me wonder if they were serious, because if it was just role-playing, why would they need to stress how serious they were? Surely everyone would just roll with it as if it was real and not find the need to specify how serious it was. Up until now, we've only really looked at the consensual side of all this, and that's dark enough, but the Cannibal Cafe had a whole section titled Available Livestock, which may not have been quite so consensual. A short paragraph read, We will soon have an online order form, where consumers will be able to arrange to purchase or lease CNM HFSA livestock. Remember that there is no limitation on the intended or actual use of any of our cows, but should any leased livestock be terminated during the lease period, you will be invoiced for the full purchase price. The section featured adverts with photos of women and short descriptions such as this one. Cal Stephanie's training is almost complete. She will soon be auctioned off as a snuff slave or butchered for her meat. Her termination options include, but are not limited to, total dehumanisation, extreme torture, hanging, asphyxiation, vivisection, live butchering, impalement and ritual slaughter. The LTP Livestock Counselors have recommended that she be given a starring role in a snuff video. Stephanie needs an owner. Stephanie actually posted in the forum a few times, but of course we have no way of knowing if she was the woman in the photo. One of the women featured is supposedly Perro's daughter, and the description includes Always willing to put his money where his mouth is, CNM HFSA Chairman Perro Loco accepted his daughter Chelsea's livestock application. Chelsea Loco is currently enrolled in the Livestock Training Programme and is being trained by our expert livestock counsellors. Apparently she hopes to eventually star in her very own snuff video. While Chelsea and other women were categorised as voluntary, some were categorised as involuntary. Take Ashley for example, who has been, quote, donated on an involuntary basis by her ex-boyfriend, who recommended that she be used as a breeder. This is really just all kinds of messed up, and what's worse is some of the posts written about these women. In this post, a user goes into worrying detail on how they would eat Ashley and requests a price for her, suggesting $3,500, and adding that they'd be happy to sell copies of the video they make of their time together. Despite Perro claiming the site is strictly focused on consenting adults, there are posts where he and others talk about using women for breeding, implying that the babies would be sold for meat. There are other posts which focus on children, such as this one which reads, I'm looking for young boy meat, 6 to 16. Any volunteer mothers out there looking to give up meat, call me. There was even a livestock application form where you could volunteer yourself or nominate someone else. There is an option of voluntary or involuntary, further suggesting that if any of this was real, consent clearly wasn't as important as Perro would want you to think. 
I hope to god this is just extreme role-playing between consenting adults, but some of the posts are really worrying and convincing. It makes you wonder if the consenting adults thing is just a disclaimer. And even if it is mostly role-playing, it's inevitable that some people won't be able to totally detach from the mindset that is condoned and encouraged here. I tried searching some of the names from the adverts online, but didn't really find anything relevant. I also tried searching some of the images to see if they might have been taken from a different site, but there was only one image that came up with any results, and all of the results were after the Cannibal Cafe was shut down. It makes you wonder how these women ended up on there. Were any of them really voluntary? Even if these women haven't been kidnapped or trafficked or something, somehow I doubt that they consented to their photos being on this forum. If not, there are possible real-life ramifications. I wouldn't put it past some people to try and track these women down and attempt to act out the fantasies. The Cannibal Cafe is one of the most bizarre and concerning rabbit holes I've researched. I don't know how much of it is real and how much is people taking role-playing to the absolute extreme, but I'm in my ways is proof that the line between fantasy and reality was definitely blurred. This wasn't the only forum of its kind, and even today there are communities focusing on cannibalism and other horrifying fetishes. The Cannibal Cafe may have stopped serving nearly 20 years ago now, but its customers certainly didn't lose their taste for blood. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments, plus any suggestions for any other disturbing corners of the internet or internet rabbit holes you'd like me to research and do a video on. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Huge thank you to my patrons whose names are on screen now. I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Thursday in a new video.